The Noble Horse by Massinger, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. The noble horse that in his fiery youth from his wide nostrils neighed courage to his rider and brake through groves of opposed pikes, bearing his lord safe to triumphant victory, old or wounded, was set at liberty and freed from service the athenian mules that from the quarry drew marble hewed for the temple of the gods the great work ended were dismissed and fed at the public cost nay faithful dogs have found their sepulchres but man to man more cruel appoints no end to the sufferings of his slave end of poem this recording is in the public domain To William E. Channing by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue To William E. Channing The pages of thy book I read, and as I closed each one, my heart responding ever said, Servant of God, well done, well done, thy words are great and bold, at times they seem to me like Luther's in the days of old half battles for the free go on until this land revokes the old and chartered lie the feudal curse whose whips and yokes insult humanity a voice is ever at thy side speaking in tones of might like the prophetic voice that cried to john in patmos write write and tell out this bloody tale record this dire eclipse this day of wrath this endless wail this dread apocalypse end of poem this recording is in the public domain this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org the warning by henry wadsworth longfellow Recording by Gary Leo Smith, August 2017, Dublin, Ohio. The Warning Beware the Israelite of old, who tore the lion in his path, when, poor and blind, he saw the blessed light of heaven no more, shorn of his noble strength, and forced to grind in prison, and at last led forth to be a pander to Philistine revelry upon the pillars of the temple laid his desperate hands and in its overthrow destroyed himself and with him those who made a cruel mockery of his sightless woe the poor blind slave the scoff and jest of all expired and thousands perished in the fall there is a poor blind samson in this land shorn of his strength and bound in bonds of steel who may in some grim revel raise his hand and shake the pillars of this commonweal till the vast temple of our liberties a shapeless mass of wreck and rubbish lies end of the warning this recording is in the public domain the good part that shall not be taken away by henry wadsworth longfellow read for librivox dot org by jolie pastor she dwells by great kanawha's side in valleys green and cool and all her hopes and all her pride are in the village school her soul like the transparent air that robes the hill above though not of earth encircles there all things with arms of love and thus she walks among her girls with praise and mild rebukes subduing e'en rude village churls by her angelic looks she reads to them an even tide of one who came to save to cast the captive's chains aside and liberate the slave and oft the blessed time foretells when all men shall be free and musical as silver bells their falling chains shall be and following her beloved lord in decent poverty she makes her life one sweet record and deed of charity
for she was rich and gave up all to break the iron bands of those who waited in her hall and labored in her lands. Long since beyond the southern sea their outbound sails have sped, while she in meek humility now earns her daily bread. It is their prayers which never cease that clothe her with such grace. Their blessing is the light of peace that shines upon her face. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Slave in the Dismal Swamp by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Pyle in dark fens of the dismal swamp the hunted negro lay he saw the fire of the midnight camp and heard at times a horse's tramp and a bloodhound's distant bay where will-o'-the-wisps and glowworms shine in bulrush and in brake where waving mosses shroud the pine and the cedar grows and the poisonous vine is spotted like the snake where hardly a human foot could pass or a human heart would dare on the quaking turf of the green morass he crouched in the rank and tangled grass like a wild beast in his lair a poor old slave infirm and lame great scars deformed his face on his forehead he bore the brand of shame and the rags that hid his mangled frame were the livery of disgrace all things above were bright and fair all things were glad and free lithe squirrels darted here and there and wild birds filled the echoing air with songs of liberty. On him alone was the doom of pain from the morning of his birth. On him alone the curse of Cain fell like a flail on the garnered grain and struck him to the earth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Slaves Singing at Midnight by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Pyle. Loud he sang the psalm of David, he a negro and enslaved, sang of Israel's victory, sang of Zion bright and free. In that hour when night is calmest, sang he from the Hebrew psalmist, in a voice so sweet and clear that I could not choose but hear, songs of triumph and ascriptions, such as reached the swart Egyptians when upon the Red Sea coast perish Pharaoh and his host. And the voice of his devotion filled my soul with strange emotion, for its tones by turns were glad, sweetly solemn, wildly sad. Paul and Silas in their prison sang of Christ the Lord arisen, and an earthquake's arm of might broke their dungeon gates at night. But alas, what holy angel brings the slave this glad evangel? And what earthquake's arm of might breaks his dungeon gates at night? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Witnesses by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Witnesses In ocean's wide domains half buried in the sands lie skeletons in chains with shackled feet and hands beyond the fall of dews deeper than plummet lies float ships with all their crews no more to sink or rise there the black slave ship swims freighted with human forms whose fettered fleshless limbs are not the sport of storms these are the bones of slaves they gleam from the abyss they cry from yawning waves we are the witnesses within earth's wide domains are markets for men's lives their necks are galled with chains their wrists are cramped with jives dead bodies that the kite in deserts makes its prey murders that with affright scare schoolboys from their play all evil thoughts and deeds anger and lust and pride 
the foulest, rankest weeds that choke life's groaning tide. These are the woes of slaves. They glare from the abyss. They cry from unknown graves. We are the witnesses. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Quadroon Girl by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org The slaver in the broad lagoon Lay moored with idle sail. He waited for the rising moon And for the evening gale. Under the shore his boat was tied And all her listless crew Watched the grey alligator slide into the still bayou. Odours of orange flowers and spice reached them from time to time, like airs that breathe from paradise upon a world of crime. The planter, under his roof of thatch, smoked thoughtfully and slow. The slaver's thumb was on the latch, he seemed in haste to go. He said, My ship at anchor rides in yonder broad lagoon. I only wait the evening tides and the rising of the moon. Before them, with her face upraised, in timid attitude, like one half curious, half amazed, a quadroon maiden stood. Her eyes were, like a falcon's, grey, her arms and neck were bare, no garment she wore save a kirtle gay, and her own long raven hair. And on her lips there played a smile, as holy, meek, and faint, as lights in some cathedral aisle, the features of a saint. The soil is barren, the farm is old, the thoughtful planter said, then looked upon the slaver's gold, and then upon the maid. His heart within him was at strife with such accursed gains, for he knew whose passions gave her life, whose blood ran in her veins. But the voice of nature was too weak, he took the glittering gold. Then pale as death grew the maiden's cheek, her hands as icy cold. The slaver led her from the door, he led her by the hand, to be his slave and paramour in a strange and distant land. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Warning by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Gary Leo Smith August 2017 in Dublin, Ohio The Warning Beware the Israelite of old Who tore the lion in his path When poor and blind he saw the blessed light of heaven no more shorn of his noble strength and forced to grind in prison and at last led forth to be a pander to philistine revelry upon the pillars of the temple laid his desperate hands and in its overthrow destroyed himself and with him those who made a cruel mockery of his sightless woe the poor blind slave the scoff and jest of all, expired, and thousands perished in the fall. There is a poor blind Samson in this land, shorn of his strength and bound in bonds of steel, who may, in some grim revel, raise his hand and shake the pillars of this commonweal, till the vast temple of our liberties, a shapeless mass of wreck and rubbish, lies. End of The Warning this recording is in the public domain. End of Poems on Slavery by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow.